So here's the advice I would give my 20 year old self. The very first thing would be how money works. If I understood the system, because it is a system and it's actually quite simple. If I really understood it as a young man, then I would know how to play the game. The people with the least financial education, they're the ones that keep their money in the banks, with wealth managers, in the stock market, and all the places that other people use that money to get rich. That's the pot of money that all of Wall Street goes to to fund their ideas. That's the same pot of money that I go to to fund my ideas, and that is where all the money is. It sits in Main Street, and it gets poached by Wall Street. Deals are everywhere. It just comes down to what you see or don't see. That's it. A lot of it's wisdom, some of it's study, and some of it is just financial education or mentors or coaches or partners that you're associated with. For example, this weekend, I flew into Nashville, Tennessee. And as I was flying in, I was marveled at the amount of cranes sitting in the air. And all I could think about was, who was it behind that deal? Who was it that bought that city block or maybe some kind of redevelopment, put up that crane? And who was it that went out and found the debt and the equity and came up with the whole idea, the whole plan that we all end up going to to consume later? You know, who is it that buys that regional mall in the middle of town that Macy's and Penny's and Kmart and all the big stores that are now out of business, who is it that buys that and later turns it into a hotel, a multifamily, maybe a retail? Who does that? Most people just look at, I'm so glad that there's now a Chipotle near me, but there's somebody above all of that that's looking at the whole space and said, how do we take this, transform it, using other people's money, both debt and equity, to make this whole area that's currently underperforming and turn it into something new and bring new life into an area using other people's money, which later, of course, shows up as your favorite hotel, your favorite restaurant, or maybe an amazing place to live. So it really boils down to what you see that no one else sees. What are you actually looking at when you see a vacant piece of land that you're driving on by? A home builder sees one home. A multifamily person sees a multifamily property. An office person sees an office building. A storage person sees a storage property. So what is it people see to make more money? And I'll give you a couple examples. When my kids were little, I used to encourage them to go out and find ways to make money. And there's multiple, multiple stories that I have, but one in particular was my son Kyle would go out and buy in bulk these Beat headphones. And all the kids at the time loved these Beat headphones. And he would go out and buy them in bulk. And then what he would do, he would simply bring them to school and sell them just below retail. And they were flying off the shelf and he was making 80 to to $100 per set just by buying them in bulk. My other son did the exact same thing when he wanted something as simple as a knife. The knives were $30, so I said, you got to figure it out. So he got three kids to buy them at 40, and he got his for free. It's just the way you think. And you always just got to look at the opportunity and where it is. It's always right in front of you. I'll give you another example. My son, Kyle, which I talked about a minute ago, was in college, and everyone in high school and college has a broken iPhone. Almost everyone has that, and they can't afford to fix it, but they always drop it, and the screens are always broken. I think you all know what I'm talking about. Kyle figured out a way to buy the iPhone screens and to actually repair these broken screens that people had. And so he would simply just see when he was at school or maybe out at a restaurant or somewhere, he would look down and say, I see your iPhone's broken. I can fix it for a hundred bucks. And they said, really? And he would go do that. So he would take their phone and fix it. And he did all of this by simply just watching a number of YouTube videos and getting the correct tools in order to do that work. But through college, he fixed hundreds of these iPhones at anywhere from $50 to $100 each, just depending on the kind of phone. And this might sound simple and trivial, but one of the things I wanted with my own kids was for them to be able to see how to make money on their own without always having to come to the parents for money, because that's what, that's what most kids do. I said, you can figure it out. You can do barter. You can figure out what do people need, solve that problem for them, 
And then miraculously, you'll have a bunch of cash in your pocket. One time I went on the internet just looking for my car to be detailed at my house. Now, for a lot of you guys know, I like Ferraris and that's so I didn't want to take it anywhere and leave it. I wanted somebody to come to my home. And who showed up? A 16 year old kid with two other 16 year old kids to do not only that car, but a bunch of other cars at the time, I had several. The kid did a great job. The best thing that happened with that kid is said, each car is $100, but if you sign up on a monthly subscription, I'll make it 50 per car. And of course you're gonna do that, it's a 50% savings. What he did is he set the price really high and made it sound like I had a huge discount, when really I signed up for $150 a month for my three cars, for him to come each and every month, and he had a long-term client. And that was three years ago, and he's still doing my stuff. This kid will work for me until he decides that he's got too many clients. The coolest part about that story is after a couple of years, I was talking to that kid again, and he said that he grew his business into a Toro business. He had over a dozen cars that he had bought and was renting out on a daily, weekly basis. And his dad was getting all fired up at him because he had over a dozen cars sitting in his house that he was renting out all the time. And he was driving better cars. He employed a bunch of kids from his high school. And all this time he had a detailing business and a Turo rental business. And he's just saving a lot of money for his next business. I can assure you that the business he's starting with, which is detailing cars, is not the business he's going to end up in. But the point is he started and he had lots of lessons and he's going to have a lot more as he progresses into whatever this young man decides to do. So what is the difference between him and the 20 other kids that are sitting in his class in front of him, behind him, and to his left and his right? What is the difference? It's all education and it's action. You just need to take action. In many, many cases, almost all, you don't even need money to start, especially in a car detailing business. You just need to put your phone number up on the internet and start getting calls and show up. If I was 20 years old, the first thing that I would do is go out and find customers and sell them on whatever it is that you're trying to do and then scale that business. Because whatever you think it's going to be, it'll be very different in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year. As new opportunities start to swirl around, you'll see that business might not be as profitable as maybe another opportunity that comes your way. But you're going to see as your network grows, your net worth will also grow. And you learn by doing, not by reading, watching a YouTube video, or anything else. You actually learn by physically doing, by taking action. You're gonna realize very quickly that when you take action, you're going to learn a lot. And of course, you're gonna have experience, which allows you to adjust course as you're moving down the road. Sometimes the best jobs are the ones that you learn the most. And right now, we're hiring, for example. We have tons of positions, but one in particular, we're looking to take this YouTube channel to the next level with a motions graphic designer. If you guys are interested in that, just click on this email below. I know when I was 20 years old that I always wanted to get rich quick. Well, I can assure you that this strategy is not a get rich quick strategy. This is a long drawn out process for when you start to be a very good business person, you'll understand how the money system works and you'll understand how to get other people's money to grow your net worth and help other people make a lot of money by investing in you. Just start stuff, even if it doesn't work, just start because you'll learn a lot. You learn a lot when it doesn't work and you learn very little when it does. Just start. One of the ways a young person can get quicker in life is to surround themselves with people that are already making a lot of money. Be careful who your teachers are. If you're listening to somebody that just has theories and standing in front of a room teaching something, but they themselves have never done it, stay away. Always align yourself with real people that are doing real things and have real businesses that have made a lot of money somehow because they will invest in you if you just ask. So everyone always asks me, how do you build a billion dollar company? I just made a video to show exactly how. Watch that here.